What is up YouTube? It's your girl Evelyn and today I will be highlighting some of your favorite classic lesbian films. Last week over on the community tab, I asked you guys for your favorites and you came through with some awesome picks like But I'm a Cheerleader, Desert Hearts, Saving Face, and Bound. But because I've already covered those films in other videos, this video is for your picks that I haven't reviewed yet. So sit back, enjoy the video, and as always there will be spoilers so proceed with caution. I had a crush on a girl. Did this make me gay? The Truth About Jane is a TV movie that originally aired on Lifetime in the early 2000s. It's about a teenager, Jane, and her struggle to come out to her family and her family's difficulty in accepting her sexuality. Now, The Truth About Jane is very much a TV movie. It's a bit corny, saccharine, and super heavy handed, but it was also a seminal film for many gay girls growing up in the 90s. Like me. Back in the day, your girl was a lifetime original movie junkie, and I am not proud. I remember watching The Truth About Jane and being blown away that a film like that even existed. Not to mention being shocked that Jane's parents still loved her even though she was gay, and feeling hopeful that maybe one day I could be Jane. This is the type of film where the message is far more important than the execution of the message. Is it perfect? No. Would it meet most people's definition of a classic film? Probably not, but is it the lesbian classic film of my heart? Absolutely. I wasn't really sure what I had just seen. I know this sounds like naive, but at first, I mean, I thought they were like practicing for boys. Lost and Delirious is all about the three Bs, boarding school, best friends, and Birds. The 2001 film, based on the 1993 novel The Wives of Bath, tells the story of a doomed love affair between the rebellious yet troubled Polly and the overachieving but ashamed Tori. And I have to say, as much as I loved Piper Perabo in Imagine Me and You, her performance in Lost and Delirious is the best thing about the film. The obsessive, hopelessly romantic Polly is one of the most tragic teen characters in any film I've ever seen. But it's not a perfect film, and uh, we're not going to talk about that. But I absolutely understand why so many of you consider it to be one of your favorite classic lesbian films. This is Petra. I met her quite um, randomly. I don't know if you've checked your laundry yet, but I think we did a switcheroo by mistake. Camille, I'd love to see you in the moonlight with your head thrown back and your body on fire. How do you approach the homosexuality problem, Camille? I'm not really sure I'd consider it a problem. When Night is Falling is a skinamax inspired Canadian romance flick about conservative Christian professor Camille and Petra, the free-spirited circus performer she falls in love with. Now, excluding the repeated use of a dog cadaver, this is definitely one of the better lesbian romance films, but it is 100% a product of its time. And for those of you who weren't around in the mid-90s, softcore films with problematic themes were very popular for some reason. And I think you can still appreciate this film, but also acknowledge that Petra should have been arrested. She stole Camille's laundry, she showed up uninvited to Camille's house and shot literal arrows at her, and after sneakily finding out where Camille works, Petra climbs a tree outside Camille's office window and just, you know, watches her. Stalking issues aside, When Night is Falling is still one of my favorite older lesbian romances. And while it didn't make me want to run off and join the circus, I did consider moving to a cozy Canadian town and corrupting a nice Christian lady. Who knows? I still might. She a Christian lady. Stay here. No matter what happens, don't move. What are you gonna do? You are my damn list of you. What? Why did you do that? He could have been killed. I'm sorry. Don't you want the honey? Got it just for you. 
I know what you're thinking. Fried Green Tomatoes is not a lesbian film. And technically, you're right. But it does depict a wonderfully tender, romantic, and devoted relationship between two women on screen in the early 90s. Not to mention, the two main characters are definitely a couple in the book. Fried Green Tomatoes is a story within a story about the relationship between unruly tomboy Iggy and straight-laced preacher's daughter Ruth. The almost sister-in-laws first become friends, then, well, really good friends. Iggy saves Ruth from her abusive husband, and Ruth saves Iggy from herself. And even if you don't consider Fried Green Tomatoes to be a classic lesbian film, or a lesbian film at all, it is still one of the best movies that came out of the 90s. You're frightened. You're damn right I'm frightened. It's natural. You don't know what's happening to you, but there's nothing to be frightened of. As long as you put your face in me, give me time, trust me. Trust you. I did trust you, and look what happened. It's a bruise. It will fade. I know it's a bruise. Look, I'm going to ask you one more time. What have you done to me? I've given you something you never dared dream of. What? Everlasting life. 1983's The Hunger is a cult classic about an ancient vampire and her attempt to acquire a new lover. And despite its extremely 80s music video intro, the film itself stands the test of time fairly well. So much so that Lady Gaga's Countess in season 5 of American Horror Story is a carbon copy of the 6,000-year-old Miriam Baylock. But my favorite thing about The Hunger has to be the way it turns the lesbian vampire trope on its head. The vampire flicks of the 60s and 70s portrayed lesbianism as being taboo as well as evil and predatory. And sure, you could argue that Miriam Baylock is a predator by nature, but her predation has nothing to do with her sexuality. In fact, the gender of her lover is inconsequential, which feels incredibly refreshing for a film that came out in the early 80s. And despite having a thin and woefully underexplained plot, The Hunger is a case of style over substance that absolutely works. It's erotic, it's creepy, it's bloody, and it's 100% a lesbian classic. That is it for the list, and if you want even more reviews from your girl, definitely consider joining Patreon. I post about movies, TV shows, short films, and books, so you should definitely come hang out. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.